Hey there, uh, this is a demo video to understand the agent concept in release management and we would also look at how to configure um, on-premises Windows agent against this release service. So to begin with, what is an agent? Agent is the release compute which does the deployment for you. As you can see in this release definition or any release definition, you will have multiple environments and each of these environments will have multiple tasks in it. Uh, the release definition also consists of uh, one or more artifacts which are the bits that you would like to deploy to a target environment. So agent downloads these artifacts and then runs this task uh, based on the parameters that you have provided for each of these tasks. So agent is the software which does the deployment for each of the environment. Obviously you see uh, an agent option here for each of these environments which lets you choose a default agent queue. We'll come to the concept of agent queues, agent pools, and how do you con manage these different agent pools and queues in a little while. The other thing that you would notice is something called demands. So what are these demands? These demands are nothing but the capabilities required by your tasks to run. For example, the Azure website deployment or the web app deployment requires Azure PS. That's why you saw an Azure PS uh, demand there. Similarly, Visual Studio test requires VS test uh, capability to be present on your agent machine. Otherwise, it would not be able to run this particular task. So let's go and revisit that agent option window. And you, as you can see, uh, there are two demands. One is Azure PS and the second one is VS test. The third one is the agent version which is required, the minimum agent version that is required to run this deployment. We will skip this for now. So let's uh, do uh, try to remove this task and see if something changes in the demands here. So as you can see that VS test is gone now. So obviously uh, this is something that helps me to uh, uh, understand if my agent has this capability uh, uh, so that it can run my deployments or not. So you can have multiple agents lined up there and some agents might have Azure PS uh, uh, capability in it, some might not. So it will automatically go and pick the right agent which has all these capabilities. What you can choose though is the default agent queue here. A default agent queue or the queue is nothing but a collection of agents and it sits on top of another concept called agent pools. Now agent pools are uh, a concept at the account level. That means you can have multiple pools. So let's go to the pools option here. So you can have multiple pools here and all of these pools sit at the account level. So as you can see, this is at account level while agent queues are at the collection level. So these are different methodologies by which you can have your permissioning model for your organization. That is who can access, who can create, and who can use these agents. So this is just a grouping of your agent. Now, as you can see here, we have two agent queues. One is hosted, the other one is default. Hosted is the one uh, which is provided by Microsoft on the cloud and on demand. As you can see, it would have one agent here. Uh, in the default queue, we don't have any agent sitting here. So I can actually go ahead and manually configure an agent against this queue so that it shows up here. And now based on the different demands and capabilities, I can go ahead and uh, deploy my apps through one of these agents. So let's do that. So the first step is to download the agent. So I'll start the download. I have already done this and it is there in my uh, um, one of the folders which is c colon agents and i will extract this one to go forward so let's do that and let me name this as agent one let's go ahead so as you can see here uh, there are uh, there is one file which is a command file and then there is an agent folder which has the details about this agent so let's go ahead and run it in the administrator mode. Please note, you have to run it in admin mode. Otherwise, this will not configure your agent. Now, it has already uh, named my uh, agent to a default name, which is my machine name uh, prepended by the agent hyphen text. 
I can go ahead and change this to agent win because this is my windows box and number one. Now I have to enter the team uh, foundation server URL or the Visual Studio Online URL. So this would be HTTPS colon my account name dot Visual Studio dot com. Then it asks which pool is uh, is the, it that I would like to configure this uh, uh, agent against. So let's go back to our uh, agent queues. Uh, here you would say this is default and in bracket there is another default. That means this is default queue which sits on top of default pool. And in the pools you can see there is a pool name default. So when you are configuring an agent it is configured against a pool. When you are using an agent you can use a queue. So that means you can have multiple queues sitting on top of the same pool. And this is all for your permissioning model as I stated before. So let's come back. So I'll just leave it to default because that is the pool against which I want to configure this agent. Then it asks me for work folder. What is this work folder? As I mentioned before, uh, the agent actually goes ahead and downloads your artifacts and then runs those tasks against those uh, uh, downloaded artifacts, right? So all of that happens inside this work folder. So again, I'll leave it as default. It asked me whether I want to run it as a Windows service or uh, under my identity. So I'll go with the default here and then it will ask me for the identity. So you have to provide your identity and once you do that, uh, you should be able to configure that agent. So, so I've entered my credentials and now it should go ahead and configure my agent against this default pool. As you can see, I have an entry here. So now it's starting some build. It means that I already had some builds which was waiting for an agent to pick up. So it has started, it's working, right? So this is the overall configuration that I wanted to uh, show it to you. You can actually go ahead and have multiple agents. The way to do that would be just go here and extract this once again in a different folder. And let's, I, let's say that I want to name it as agent two. We'll, we'll repeat the same process here. And once you do that, right, you will have another agent running here. So I can name it as agent win hyphen two. So a little bit fast forward here. I have uh, already configured another uh, agent against the same default queue. As you can see, we have two agents, agent win one and agent win two against this default queue. So when I trigger a new release, this can go either through uh, agent one or agent two, depending on whether uh, uh, both of them or one of them uh, meets the demands specified. As you can see in the capabilities, uh, these capabilities are nothing but the uh, uh, demands met by that agent and is dependent on the software that is installed on the machine on which uh, agent is configured. Uh, so that's all I wanted to discuss as part of this video. Hope you liked it. Thank you.